A reading from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, You speak to us and we will listen, but do not, do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. As a response to our first reading, we'll say together Canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah, which is in your prayer books on pages 86 to 87. Canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Continue now with our second lesson. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, 
the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. As a response to our second reading, we'll say together Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb, which is in your prayer book on pages 93 to 94, and is at the bottom of page 4 of your bulletin. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is. And by your will, they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood, you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation. A kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne. And to Christ the Lamb. Be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Continue now with the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to them, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Christ. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Got one basic idea for us today. It's an idea I remember from um, Ethics in Seminary. I think it was by an essay by a guy named Herbert McKay, but you don't need to remember his name. The basic idea is this, is that the rule book tells you how the game works, how the game is played. The manual tells you how to play the game well. 
The rule book is what tells you how the game works, how the game is played. The manual tells you how to play the game well. If you're not abiding by what's in the rule book, then whatever game you are playing isn't the right game. If you're not reading the manual, you might still be playing the game, whatever it is, but you're probably just not playing it very well. Give me an example of what I mean. My freshman year of college, a group of us uh, got together to play Ultimate Frisbee uh, down in the intramural fields. Um, I grew up playing Ultimate Frisbee uh, at summer camp, so I, I knew how this game worked. A lot of the other guys did too. Um, if you're not familiar with it, um, Ultimate Frisbee, to score a point is sort of like catching a touchdown. You catch the Frisbee in the end zone, and that's how you score a point. So we go down to these, <laughs> to these intramural fields, uh, just big, you know, wide open green fields, and they've got... Uh, goal posts, like, like uh, field goals at either, at either end. Uh, we set up some cones to mark the end zones, and we're playing. And uh, my friend Matt uh, apparently has never played um, Frisbee before, so he catches the Frisbee, and he's on the one-yard line. He's got like three teammates open over here. And Matt turns around, and he just flings the Frisbee through the uprights and starts cheering. And we all, both teams, we all stopped and just said, what you doing, Matt? And he goes, is that... Did I not just score? And he said, no, that's not, I don't know what game that is. That's not a game that exists as far as I know. But that's not how you play ultimate Frisbee. You're supposed to catch the Frisbee in the end zone. He goes, oh, okay. So I just caused a turnover, didn't I? He goes, I mean, yeah, you just caused a turnover. <laughs> Whatever game Matt was playing, it just wasn't ultimate Frisbee. He didn't know the rule book, so he was playing something different. Today's Exodus passage is about how God gives us a rule book, the Ten Commandments. This is early on in the story of the Israelites becoming God's people. This is sort of a story about how God looks at the earth, sees how broken it is. There's tyrants like Pharaoh, there's oppression, there's violence, and God says, we're going to start over. He leads the Israelites out of Egypt, and to start a new group of people, people who really know how to be God's people, he starts simple. Okay, Israelites, here's the Ten Commandments. Here is the rule book. Today, it's just about the rule book. Now, over time, the Israelites uh, will take this rule book. They will read, mark, inwardly digest it. And over time, it will grow into something like Emmanuel. A, a, not Emmanuel. Um, it's an interesting slip of the tongue there. But Emmanuel. Um, it won't just be the Ten Commandments. It'll be the entire Torah. It'll be the Psalms. It'll be the books of the kings. It'll be uh, the prophets. In this rule book, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness, will grow. And instead of just playing the game of being God's people, they will learn how to play it well. Christians will, uh, will take this and they will see that in Jesus of Nazareth, uh, we see not only the embodiment of the rule book, but also the embodiment of the manual. We'll see in Jesus of Nazareth, not just how the game of being God's person is played, but how to play it to its utmost best, how to thrive, how to flourish as being a human person. Today, in the wilderness, however, it's just the rule book. We're not to the question of how to be humans really, really well yet, of how to flourish. We're not to the question of how to help the image of God in us shine its most brightly. We're still very, very basic. You don't throw the frisbee through the uprights. We've got simple rules today in the rule book. Don't murder. Don't steal. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Honor your parents. For Christians, we're not in the realm of Christian love yet. We're not in the realm of taking up your cross and following. Most of the stuff in the Ten Commandments is about refraining from things that are bad. We're not really identifying what is good and going after that yet. The Ten Commandments are telling us how to stay on the court, so to speak. They're not telling us how to dribble past a defender or how to dunk, for example. Part of what is so hard about being in the United States right now is that it feels like we're playing with different rule books. Policy decisions about economics or education or any number of other things, those are supposed to be manual questions. How do we be sitting together as well as is possible? But now it feels like there are more fundamental questions up for grabs. Voting, violence, when free speech is free speech and when it's intimidation or cruelty, stuff like that. People have died. 
not just from illness, from the pandemic, but from each other's hands. It feels like the rule book is getting pitched out the window. A lot of people of color in the United States right now are saying they've never even had the same rule book. It doesn't feel like we're debating the manual, how to do this well. It feels like we're debating something more fundamental than that. In an environment like that, it is easy for us as Christians to forget that the calling of Christians is to know the rule book in our bones so that we aren't just playing the game as it is designed, but that we are playing the game of being human as well as is possible, playing it the way Jesus plays it. The rule book says, thou shalt not murder. But Jesus also gives us a manual. Consider these words from the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard it said that you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. Rule book. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. We're a little further in than the rule book at that point. How can we learn to be humans well if we've forgotten the rule book? Jesus continues, Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not swear falsely. Rule book but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, Manuel, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. It's hard to remember that we're called to Christian love during a time when it feels like the very rule book is up for grabs. We're in a pandemic. A lot of people have COVID-19. A lot of people y'all know have had it. Friends have had it. Family members have had it. The president and the first lady, amongst others, have COVID now. And in this environment, uh, there's a lot of us Christian folks who have mixed feelings about praying for the president because the president's done this or that or the other thing. So what if you feel that the president is your enemy? Don't forget the manual. Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? If you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Our call is to play the game of being God's people really, really well. It really does seem like the rule book is up for grabs right now. I get it. It seems like we've lost sight of basic human decency at all levels of society. Again, in this environment, it is easy to forget that Christians are not called to mere basic human decency. We are called to love. You are the salt of the earth. You as Christian people, your job is to preserve what is good, to resist the rot and the decay. When a society seems to lose sight of the rule book and humanity seems bent on playing some kind of game that is different than the game of being just decent human beings, it is all the more important than Christians that Christians play the game as well as possible. Decency cannot and has never been enough for Christian people. We have to love. Who is going to love in this environment if not Christians? But there's another temptation in an environment like ours as well. When a society seems to be at risk of losing sight of the rule book altogether, it is tempting to pretend that the rule book isn't actually up for grabs at all and that all of our disagreements are actually just debates about the manual, which is to say that it's tempting to believe that all of our disagreements aren't about fundamental issues, but are basically just differences of policy, 
differences of philosophy of how the game of being human is played at its best. That's not true. What we are seeing right now isn't a matter of secondary issues being debated by a massive group of people who all agree on the fundamentals. It's not the manual that's up for grabs. It is the rule book that's being called into question sometimes. Fundamental things are on our societal table right now. Violence, race, the kind of basic trust and fair play that lets a democratic republic like ours actually work. The tension between public safety and the assertion of individual will. These are not cosmetic. These are fundamental. These are rule book issues, not manual issues. You are the salt of the earth. You are a preservative of what is good. You are vessels, not just of decency, but of the love of God. You are called not simply to keep the rule book in mind, but to go beyond the rule book to the manual embodied in Emmanuel. To be human well, to flourish as a person, to follow Jesus of Nazareth, to love your neighbor as yourself, to love your enemies and to pray for them. We've been talking a lot the past couple of weeks about the desert and God's people's journey in the wilderness and the desert. This is sort of where in the desert where God starts over with humanity. He says, I'm going to take this people as my own. Just this people. We're going to start small. These Israelites. Humanity has lost sight of so much. So I'm going to start over and give them a rule book. But it takes a long time to learn the rules. Years of practicing musical scales and chords and finger patterns, for example, are necessary before you can begin to play Chopin. Learning how to play and learning how to play well are different chapters in our journey. There is a new season of Great British Baking Show out now. Thank God. Woohoo! <laughs> One of the things that you notice sometimes is that sometimes the contestants, when they get it, well, first off, if you don't know how this works, it's a baking show, basically. Um, and you get um, a recipe, and a lot of times the recipe is incredibly sparse. It'll just say, make a mango chutney. And the contestants are like, how do I make a mango chutney? What Great British Baking Show is testing is how long they've spent with the rule book. Have they mastered basic things like how to make a chutney? That's how you know whether or not this baker is going to thrive or not. You've got to learn the rule book before you can learn the manual. But learning the rules, even that part takes a long time. The Exodus is about God teaching the Israelites the rule book. And it takes as long as it takes. The journey from Mount Horeb, which is also Mount Sinai, the journey from Mount Sinai to the Promised Land should have taken the Israelites about 11 or 12 days walking straight from one place to the next. 11 or 12 days. But we know that's not how long it takes. It takes them nearly 40 years we need the rule book in our spiritual muscle memory if we're ever going to reach the promised land, if we're ever going to consider the manual. Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not make an idol, thou shalt have no gods but God. This is basic rule book stuff. This is how being human is played. Speak the truth, do justice, repent of what is ours to repent of. Pray including for your enemies, that's a further step. If we can't manage the basics of being human, how can we expect to excel at being human? In other words, if we can't manage basics, like thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not bear false witness, how can we ever expect to take up our cross and follow Jesus? One more example of the rule book and manual idea right now. Like you, uh, I'm pretty sick and tired of this whole pandemic thing. And like you, uh, I continue to have every now and then a flare up of the same struggles I had in the first couple of weeks. Claustrophobia, boredom, just being kind of resentful about this whole mask thing, loathing the smell of hand sanitizer. <laughs> um, 
all that kind of stuff. It flares up every now and then. Because we've been doing this for several months now, uh, sometimes I fall into the trap of thinking that I should be good at this by this point. Like I should be well on my way to knowing how to navigate pandemic life well. It's not really the case. A few years ago, you will remember, uh, you may remember a book by Malcolm Gladwell, I think it was called Outliers. Uh, and in that book, Malcolm Gladwell, he talked about this idea that to master something, it took 10,000 hours of practice. It took 10,000 hours of practice to master something. If you count literally every moment of every day, from the moment that President Trump issued the national emergency on, on March 13th, on this Wednesday at 8 p.m., we will just be at 5,000 hours of pandemic life. From March 13th to 8 p.m. this Wednesday, I think it's 8 p.m., you get the point. 5,000 hours. And that's counting sleeping, that's counting everything. If you keep feeling like you're just not good at pandemic life, it's because you're just not good at pandemic life, and that's okay. You shouldn't expect that of yourself. Allow yourself some of the grace that God allows for you. Just this Wednesday is only halfway there, and that's if we count literally every hour about becoming experts at pandemic life. Give yourself some grace. We're still learning the rules. We're still practicing the rule book of what life is like right now. A few seconds ago, internet gremlins that we had not anticipated attacked St. Liz and, you know, cut the live stream. We're still figuring this out. We're still practicing the rule book. I imagine that you are too. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace. This is what the desert is like, falling down and getting back up. Falling down getting back up. Amen. Continue with the Apostles' Creed, which is at the bottom of page 5 of your bulletin. and is on page 96 of the prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continue with the prayers on page 97 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Continue with suffrages A at the bottom of page 97. I'll invite you to join Krista with the responses marked with an R. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. 
nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day is found on page 234. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask. Except through the merits and meditation, mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for Sunday is on page 98. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Peace is on page 99. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life, and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Mission is on page 100. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach and pe preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This time I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings, either silently or aloud. Almighty God, we pray for your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, David, our own bishop, Daniel, our priest, Krista, our seminarian, for all clergy and people. Almighty God, we pray for the many leaders and nations of the world, especially Donald, our president, and Greg, our governor, Give them wisdom and discernment that they may make decisions that further the common good. Father, today we pray especially for all uh, who are impacted by COVID-19, especially those uh, who are sick with the coronavirus right now, especially uh, members of our government, especially President Trump and First Lady Melania. Restore them to health, keep them safe during a precarious time. Now, Father, we commend to your loving care those names entrusted to our congregation's prayer list this week, especially Brother Jim, Deborah, Mary Scott, Terry and Chip, Greta and Patty, Lisette, Taylor, Darlene, Betsy and Martha, for Jean, Hannah and Brandon, Pat and Jack, for Maddie, Bonner, and Julie. Almighty God, receive the prayers of your people, those spoken aloud and those left unsaid, and grant that what we have asked faithfully we may obtain effectually for the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Amen. Continue with the general thanksgiving, which is on page 101 of the prayer book and on page 7 of your bulletin. 
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. And now, my friends, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.